So, a few weeks ago, my Roborock S4 started giving me the error 1 code, saying that the laser distance sensor was stuck. That's this sensor here at the top, which is supposed to spin while in operation, mapping out the room. The app recommended that I clean the area to try to get it unstuck, but no matter what I did, it wouldn't run and I'd keep getting the error. I contacted Roborock support via their website form, and after confirming my Amazon order number that proved I was still within the one-year warranty, they agreed to ship me a replacement LDS sensor. Otherwise, I would have had to pay to ship my S4 back to them to replace it themselves. When I received the replacement sensor, I also got a link to a YouTube video showing me how to replace the sensor. It was pretty straightforward, however, the RoboVac model they use in the video was different from the S4 that I had. That's why I wanted to make this video, to show other S4 owners how to replace the LDS sensor themselves. Regardless of whether you got it as a replacement from Roborock directly, or bought through a third-party supplier. The first thing you do is pry off the front top cover. Just use your fingers and use an even amount of force. Next you'll notice a series of screws securing the hinge and the LDS sensor cover. Use a medium-sized Phillips head screwdriver to get these off. There should be eight of these screws accessible at this stage. If this is your first time opening up your S4, you'll notice that one of the screw heads has white tape or paint covering it. This probably lets Roborock know that you've already opened up your device, and that probably voids the warranty. Since they were the ones that told me to open up my device, I'll assume they won't hassle me about it in the future. Anyway, finish removing the rest of the screws. Sorry the camera got unfocused at this point, but I think you can figure out what I'm doing. At this point, you can remove the main cover. The hinge covers securing the cover to the body are separate pieces that'll fall right off. The screws covering the LDS sensor cover are hidden under these two rubber stoppers. First remove them using an X-Acto knife or some other thin, flat tool. Now remove these two remaining screws. They're the same size as the first eight you removed, so you can group them together. With that, you'll be able to remove the LDS cover. The LDS unit itself is secured by four larger, thicker Phillips head screws. The replacement LDS unit I got didn't come with extra screws, so make sure not to lose these. As you can see, the four screws securing the LDS unit are larger and thicker. Make sure to separate them from the other screws. Once all four screws are removed, the LDS unit pops right out. It's not secured with any ribbons or tabs. At this point, you can take your replacement LDS unit and put it where the old one went. Now it's just a matter of screwing everything back up in reverse order. First, the four larger screws that secure the LDS unit. Now it's secure the LDS cover. Next, don't forget the rubber stoppers. These prevent the nearby dustbin from getting dust inside the sensor cover. Speaking of which, in the original Roborock instructional video, they asked me to remove the dustbin. In the S4, this wasn't really necessary. However, you should probably empty the dustbin ahead of time anyway to prevent contamination. Once that's done, you can put the main cover back on the unit and then replace the hinge covers. Three of the smaller screws are used to secure each hinge unit. Finally, replace the front cover. Take the flat part that comes up against the main cover and slide it under the main cover. Then, using a firm, even force, pop and snap the front cover back into place one peg at a time. And that's it. Now, when we turn the unit on, starting to clean. And you can see it starts spinning. So hopefully yours on. works the exact same way. Anyway, I really like my S4. It's a really smart and high quality robot vacuum, but this laser distance error thing is really annoying. I'm glad that it was under warranty and that Roborock was able to replace my part and that it was so easy to repair. 
However, I've heard that aftermarket parts are really expensive, close to $100, and I'm really hoping my unit won't have any more problems. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I hope your Roborock keeps on sucking.